Hi everyone. Um, so uh, obviously this is a you know a juncture where we are all waiting for the awards, and that's where I'm speaking. So I know I will keep it short and you know uh, keep it to the point. So thanks a lot. Thanks for the opportunity. This has been a fantastic event. Uh, I congratulate the E4M team uh, and Naval sir for uh, you know bringing programmatic to the forefront. Uh, it's very exciting and as. Uh, Naval sir said uh, we will be, you know, having a lot of scope in this area, uh, and that's what uh, I would like to highlight as well. That you know the kind of uh, interesting, innovative work which is possible on programmatic. So uh, we are MIQ, uh, and uh, we focus a lot on data, data science, and analytics. Uh, the way we define ourselves is that um, you know brands have a lot of their data, and it is present in many systems, many areas. And they would want to utilize that. And we have also been uh, hearing the panel discussions where there's a lot of talk about first party data, zero party data, uh, second party, third party data as well. So all these are, you know, obviously technical jargons, but in a simple way, if you have to look at it, it's all about brands have their data. How do we, you know, consolidate it all together, which makes sense? Uh, you know, it could be a single consumer uh, perspective which a brand would want to develop and they would want to understand who are my different consumer segments, how am I approaching them, how am I targeting them, and how am I doing sales and marketing with them, right? And how, how am I delighting them? So data obviously is exploding. Data will play a very, very big role. And that's where we have focused on, we have very strong data science skills. And with that, we are able to help brands consolidate uh, their data. We also have uh, world's, uh, one of the largest data lake where we are collecting data on cookie ID or device ID or contextual signals, offline signals as well. Uh, and with that, we are able to help brands uh, enrich their first party data, make uh, uh, have a very good understanding of their consumer, uh, answer basic questions like, you know, who is my consumer, where are they, how do I reach out to them, and then when I'm reaching out to them, how do I measure the impact of what am I doing, right? And the reason this is important is because in the last two years, uh, world has changed, uh, world has become more digital, world has become more uh, uh, connected, uh, and consumers' behavior has changed. Consumers are expecting a lot in terms of speed, in terms of reliability, in terms of privacy as well. And that is where a very, very robust data strategy will help you. And, and then programmatic as a media channel becomes very important because programmatic as a media channel allows you to make use of your first party data, enrich it with third party data and activate uh, the media. Uh, one more highlight I would say is that, you know, there are companies who do media very well. There are companies who do data uh, very well. There are very few companies in the world who are able to bring it together, uh, have the data, uh, derive the insights, activate it in the media and then measure the impact. So from that perspective, it's a very, very, um, it's a sweet spot which very few companies are able to have and we want to have this capability for all the brands in the world so that then they can make best use of uh, their data and their media strategy. Uh, we are present in uh, uh, nine countries, 22 plus cities and uh, uh, you know we are 1000 plus now, this is a slightly old number, now we are already 1000 plus so our scale is growing in a good way. Uh, but the most important point from your perspective is that, you know, the challenges which we are facing. The challenge which we are facing is that, you know, data is isolated, there are walled gardens, then, you know, there is, there are uh, supplies isolated as well. Uh, and it is referring again to the same point that, you know, how do you bring it all together and answer these fundamental questions. And that's why, uh, you know, we talk about better connected marketing where we are able to connect the dots between the data points and supply uh, inventory from a media perspective and how do we bring it all together. And I just want to highlight it with a simple example. You know, what, earlier what used to happen, if you look at say 15 years back, when you used to do a campaign, right, you would basically do a campaign, you're doing an online campaign, you would take some, uh, you know, banner slots on one website, on one news website, for example, then you will also take banner site from uh, another website, right? And you're doing all these things manually. And you might have overlap between the audiences. I might be going to Times of India, I might also be going to Hindustan Times, right? So you are not able to have a unified reach, you are not able to maximize your reach. For some consumer, you, you might be, you know, reaching out to them 20 times. For some consumer, you might be reaching out to them, 
Not at all. You might be missing out completely. Now, if you do this in a programmatic way, what you're doing is you are consolidating the supply. And then from there, you are saying that I want to reach out to the audiences. I want to have a frequency of six. And I want to maximize in this target audience. So then you, you have like, you know, instead of reaching two million audiences, you are able to reach to six million. And you are able to also have an ideal frequency so that you are not irritating the consumer as well. Now, this is something which programmatic will be able to do not only on simple display, but also on OTTs, also on connected TV, also on digital out of home, and also on the you know future form factors which will come in because 5G is coming and we will have explosion of more form factors as well. So, uh, so with this, uh, what I want to do is, you know, I want to make it real for you. So, you know, just want to quickly talk about some of the very interesting case studies which we have in the India market. So, uh, this is a lot of text here, so let me explain it. So, this is a very interesting uh, campaign which we have done where uh, this company sells power inverters. So, you know, in India, we have a lot of parts where power outage happens. And then, obviously, the households will start their power inverter and they will be back, right? Your fan is running, your electricity is running, basically. Now, what we did was, uh, they, they wanted to do a campaign where they wanted to reach out to the right consumers, uh, right, and talk about their power inverter. Uh, what we did was, we, uh, we understood that there is a website of Government of India which is talking about power outages by time and by different geographies, different pin codes uh, in various parts of India. Uh, now, obviously, this is website data unstructured, so our data science and tech team uh, crawled the website, uh, right, of course, with permission from the government. Uh, and then from there, they uh, derived that data and put it in a structured data layer. Right, which was fed into the programmatic uh, platform, and then we did the campaign. So, for example, uh, you know, if you have like, say, in um, uh, Pune, there is a power outage on Sunday from between 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. So, on, in Pune, our campaign will trigger in Pune within that area, within that sub area of Pune, that campaign will trigger where a consumer will get the communication that hey, you are, uh, you know, basically uh, you are having a power outage, why don't you buy this inverter? And when you click on that banner, you will also get to see the nearest uh, you know, showroom, elect uh, power electrical showroom, where you can buy that uh, inverter as well. So obviously, this is a very, very contextually relevant uh, you know, campaign, and the results were fantastic. Uh, the engagement was through the roof. And um, you know, it, it was started as a pilot, and then obviously, it got extended to the entire country as well. Uh, this is another one. Uh, this is my personal favorite, basically. So this is with L'Oreal. Uh, so um, what uh, L'Oreal wanted to do was, and you know, uh, uh, this is obviously, of course, through our um, agency partner and you know, with client and with our agency partner, we have been continuously uh, doing campaigns with L'Oreal. Uh, but this was a very, very innovative one where we said that, okay, how do we target the right consumer for L'Oreal, right? And uh, some of the data signals which we used were apography. Uh, consumers who are browsing on Nika, Purple, Glam app, then offline visitation. Consumers who are frequently going into salons, uh, especially L'Oreal salons. Those are obviously the right consumers. And then of course the in-market audiences, beauty, fashion and hair care enthusiasts. Uh, then uh, the, on the creative side, we have a very interesting technology where we are able to uh, convert uh, you know, a brand's best performing social posts and social uh, uh, you know advertisements for programmatic and then from there we are able the look and feel is very good look and feel is almost like an insta post or a facebook post but on running on programmatic uh, so the price performance is very high the click through rates are very high because you know obviously the uh, the display is very very attractive than the normal display and from there uh, you know we were able to also get the consumer into the whatsapp account of l'oreal the business account of l'oreal where l'oreal was able to engage with the consumer answer their uh, hair care related queries or beauty care related queries and then also give them coupons uh, you know which they can uh, monetize um, at the salon also giving them the nearest salon address so very very customized for the consumer and uh, adding a lot of value in the consumer's life uh, then from there, uh, you know, we also did hyper-local targeting, right? So because there are 
uh, we were given the address of the salons by L'Oreal for the entire country, for specific cities, and then from there, we were able to do hyper-local targeting, and we were also able to establish what is the right radius in which we should be targeting these consumers. Then one more very innovative layer which we added was, we said that, okay, let's create an index. Uh, you know, you know Sensex, right? Sensex is the index of stocks. Similarly, we created an index where when consumers are browsing on beauty app or when consumers are searching on beauty-related products or L'Oreal-related products, or when the right TG is online, uh, we have all these signals. Uh, as I was saying, we have a data lake capability as well. So in real time, we, are, we created this index. When this index is up, we know that consumer is interested, uh, also searching about L'Oreal products. So this is the right time uh, to intensify the delivery of the campaign. So we increase the intensity of the campaign in the right TG during that time. And when consumer is not uh, online available, when, not, when consumer is not interested, we reduce the intensity of the campaign or we stop the campaign. And this is all happening in real time, so that there is a lot of efficiency in which the brand's budget is uh, being uh, spent. So this again created a very good uh, layer of efficiency. Uh, we also did a very extensive brand survey uh, during this campaign. We wanted to understand what is the impact on uh, brand awareness, brand consideration. And yeah, so with all these innovations, we got very, very strong engagement. Uh, we, we got three times more performance uh, than the standard campaign which you would do in a display environment. Uh, we also know from the brand that they were able to drive a lot of sales and revenue uh, you know, from their WhatsApp business account, they were able to track as well. Uh, and there was a 4% increase in overall brand awareness, which for a L'Oreal kind of brand is big. Uh, and mo most importantly, 62% of uh, the consumers who saw the ad, uh, you know, uh, had a, there, there was a, a big lift in the consideration as well. Uh, and then from there, uh, one more case study, and then I will, you know, kind of get to the end of the presentation. So um, this is, uh, you know, MX Player, a very big OTT platform in India, and they launched uh, a very big um, show called Lockup, right? And the concept of the show was very interesting. Obviously, uh, Kangana Ranaut was the main celebrity, and then there were a lot of celebrities uh, in the India market who participated in this, uh, in this show. And what we did was we, we basically uh, you know, optimized the creatives in such a way that for a particular celebrity, the, the gender of the audience who they attract, we are targeting them. And we are also having different, different taglines for different audiences which will relate to them, which will talk to them in a very intimate way. Uh, and this was again a very, very, uh, very, very kind of engaged campaign which we did. Uh, so for every, uh, you know, every Jenner, every celebrity, we had a different creative, different tagline, different audience targeting. And uh, uh, yeah, meaning the, the main part I would like to highlight here is that, you know, we managed 180 creative variants, which, uh, you know, is not possible without technology and automation, uh, right? So complete automation, uh, complete elimination of manual, this is the only way you can have uh, this kind of correlation. And of course, the campaign performed very, very well. 1.75x uh, times better performance than other creatives. So, uh, so yeah, you know, I think just wanted to quickly, this is a very busy slide, I, you know. So just wanted to, you know, kind of give you a glimpse of what we do. So, you know, we, we have our tech and data stack where, uh, you know, we are working on various uh, DSP platforms. And then this is connected uh, technologically. And within that, then we have a data lake where we are collecting 500 plus uh, attributes, which could be demographics related, which could be, uh, you know, uh, demographics would include, you know, your gender, your parental status, economic status, uh, you know, uh, and your interests. Then uh, also a lot of contextual data which we are obtaining from the web, web browsing behavior, uh, which will include the topic data, which will include the, uh, the, the keywords which a consumer is browsing on, et cetera. And a lot of live, you know, a uh, lot of uh, footfall related data, a lot of bra brand affinity in terms of physical attributes as well. So just to make it simple and give you an example, uh, suppose, uh, you know, BMW would want to do a targeting, would want to do a campaign. Now, what kind of signals we can help them with? We can help them with a cohort where we are saying that their economic uh, status, their occupation, and their 
family uh, level is indicating that they are the right consumer for you. But then what we are doing is we are adding one more layer of data signal and we are saying that this cohort are also browsing in the last three months about BMW, Auto, Audi or Mercedes uh, brands. So definitely from their online browsing behavior perspective, these consumers are interested in uh, luxury cars. Then we add one more layer and we are saying that these consumers are definitely qualified that way. But in fact, in the last month, they are also from a footfall behavior perspective going into dealerships of these luxury cars as well. Now, with all these signals combined, we have a very, very good understanding of the cohort. And then we are targeting and that is how we are, you know, kind of take the targeting to the next level, uh, you know, and, and have the precision which we want. Uh, and then, of course, we are also able to then connect the macro trends. So I gave the example of search signals. We can also have weather signals. Now, obviously, you know, when you're driving footfall for these consumers who are interested in a luxury car, you would not want to have a very high intensity campaign when the weather is very bad because that time the consumer is not going to go to the car showroom and do a test drive. So you would not want to, you know, spend your budgets during that time. So these are the innovation layers which add up to the efficiency of the campaign and then from there uh, the magic happens. Right, so uh, you know, again very busy slide but what we, what we do uh, fundamentally is we connect the data from various uh, sources, we discover insights, we activate it and then as we activate it obviously from the campaign also we get more data which we again connect to uh, the data which we are you know, driving insights out of and the, we, we are able to drive sharper insights and then we are able to activate it in an even better way. So it's a continuous process which we do for ev our every campaign and also for our clients as well. Uh, and just want to quick highlight, this is all automated, right? So we have created technologies, we have a data studio, our in-house data studio where we are able to have 200 plus global data partnerships in all regions which we operate in and that's why we have huge amount of data. It's completely GDPR compliant, complete non-PII data, but you know, we have this automated system where we are able to have data collected, data connected with each other. Uh, from there, we are able to drive insights in a hub, which our planners and traders use to uh, uh, you know, uh, put the best foot forward when they are starting a campaign. And then from there, of course, the trading is also completely automated. So on an average, uh, our trading is 40-50% efficient than any trading team in the world. Uh, and yeah, uh, we, we are very, very focused on right environments, premium environments, brand safe environments uh, as well. So this is something which we want to take it very, very seriously. Uh, and, uh, you know, in the panel discussion also, there was a lot of discussion about the people input, right? So we have, we have a very strong data science team which is powering all these data innovations which we are doing. Uh, and then we have a world-class trading and client servicing team who is helping uh, our agency partners and brands to have the best uh, servicing which is possible in the market. Uh, and uh, yeah, meaning we are not new to India, so we have been working with a lot of brands uh, and we have been growing very, very fast uh, uh, in, in this area. I just wanted to highlight this as well. Uh, and yeah, um, so, so uh, you know, by working with us, you can reach more engaged users. You can basically, you know, tell very interesting stories. You can connect the data. And then most importantly, uh, you can also measure the impact of your campaigns and derive insights out of it, which will obviously be helpful for you to, you know, uh, when you go into the next campaign, you are going in a much more informed way, in a much more uh, knowledgeable way. Thank you.